founder of DUT, a brand entity brand with a powerful story. Keen to support her family, parents, siblings, she moved from Sri Lanka over to Singapore as a domestic helper. Nidu will explain what is a domestic helper, some time we call it, we call it the main. Uh, it's a uh, very important uh, lot of people in Singapore. And she has decided to move from Sri to Singapore almost 20 years ago. After taking multiple self-development courses with AIDA, she set up a own e-commerce business selling tea from Sri Lanka. She has now set up a own non-profit organization called Emerging Hope Lanka, which aims to educate and empower rural women. She has previously spoken at events like TEDx and United Nations Women. Please welcome on stage Nidu. Thank you, Professor Sevier. Good morning, everyone. I would like to say, first of all, my uh, heartfelt thank you to Professor Sevier and Pierre Claus and the whole team of ESS uh, University uh, for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share my journey with all of you today. I, my only hope is that you find some courage to do what you're going to do in your life to the future world that you are stepping into. So, uh, I chose this uh, first picture you could see. Uh, the picture tells us a lot of things when we look at it. As we are speaking about the transition from 2020 to 2050, I'm sure you can uh, visualize and see how the leaf have uh, gone through their journey as well. So this week is a special week for all of you who are here in this room today. It's a week called Imagination Week. And all of you are, is about to start something new, uh, new to the world that you are stepping into. A um, few years ago, I'm sorry. A uh, few years ago, while I was working in Singapore as a domestic helper, I had the opportunity to attend a leadership program. I was sitting there as you are sitting here today, with full of hope, so many questions in my mind. Uh, what do I visualize for my future? Uh, what is your personal calling? And what, why do you do what you do? And what is the purpose? And what what is the transition? So, and those questions slow it me down to think. What do I really want to create? And for whom? And why? So, if someone asked me a few years ago, uh, it's 30 years ago, exactly 30 years back now, um, I would be an uh, entrepreneur, or a micro-business coach, I wouldn't believe it. But today, I am very happy to say, I am an entrepreneur, I, am, I own a tea business, and also I am a micro-business coach, and also I have uh, started a non-profit organization uh, to support women and educate women in Sri Lanka. Uh, this is me. As a very young girl, uh, very happy, in my age around, I think, three to four, didn't know what's life going to bring. I was very happy in that age. And this is my family. Uh, the left one, uh, okay, the left one is with my whole family. After my fifth brother was born, after we took this picture, because I don't have any pictures of my family. This is the only picture I have, because at that time we were a very poor family. We did not have any, any cameras or whatsoever to take a picture of family. And somebody took this picture for us, and this is the only picture that has survived after burning my house. Uh, I remember 
When I was very young, about 11 years old, I was coming from a school and my mother had tried to kill herself by poisoning because she could not live with my father's abuse. Luckily, she didn't die on that day. But few years later, she passed away, leaving me to take care of five siblings and I became a mother to my family. This is my family after my mom passed away. And we had, my little brother was just one and a half year all that time. And we had to time together about two years exactly with my father. And two years later, my father and my third brother died in a tragic drowning accident. At that time, we had nothing. No house, no saving, and nothing. We, our house was, roof was our sky, and the floor was our house. And my uncle and aunt decided to send us to an orphanage. And we were sent to a few different orphanages. I asked when I was in the orphanage, can I continue my school? They say no, because I was two years left behind. Then I had no choice, but I have to wait until I become 18 years old. Ever since then, I took my parents' role for my siblings. In the age of 18, I start working in a garment factory, about $100 per month. That was the only job I could get as a helper. They did not give me the uh, job because I was educated. They gave me, they had the feeling, sympathy for me because I have to look after my siblings. This is why I went through few companies and that's the only job I could get. And I worked there for three years. While I was working, our culture is very different in Sri Lanka. Uh, it's not very open. Uh, minded. Uh, I was coming from work and I was traveling through the bus and uh, one of the boys tries, try, trying to harass me, I mean he was trying to gain my attention. We, we, we face this every day while I, we are trying, we were, we are drive, I mean riding the bus. On that day when I was coming, my uh, uncle's daughter was in the same bus and when I saw her I really got scared why because I knew what's going to happen next because in my mind was saying to me that she would go and complain to my uncle I knew what's going to come next so I was really frightened I tried to move but I couldn't when I came she was already told him I really didn't ask the attention of that boy he was really trying to harass me and he was trying to gain my attention. But I suffered the consequences. I was really angry. But then I have to stop working because my uncle forbid me going to work anymore. Then I decided to move on. I pleased to my uncle and aunt, let me go and work. I did apply to work in Singapore and Dubai while I was uh, working in the garment factory. But then uh, it was a big challenge for me to convince them when I got the uh, in, uh, approval from Singapore to go and work abroad. But I managed. Then I found a, dom as a, a job as a domestic worker in Singapore. Then, when I came to Singapore, as, a, as I left my village, you know, I have no idea. I never been to airport. I have, I never, I never experienced an aeroplane before. Only the experience that I had about a flight that flight flew over my village. And when I arrived to Singapore, I had a single, I had no money, a zero cent. My first experience 
of the aeroplane was a blurry memory. I don't remember everything, but I knew I have come to the next stage of my life. Back then, I didn't know who I was or what I wanted. Uh, all I knew was I want a better life for myself and my sibling. When I arrived to Singapore, I didn't know how to speak English. I only knew how to say a few words. Yes, madam, come and go. Okay. This is the first few words that I knew how to speak. I, I start working with a Chinese family. My first job was $200 per month, and I work day and night. Uh, as a domestic helper working in Singapore, it's a very important job, as uh, Professor Xavier said. Uh, it's here working as a helper. We work for a family to look after their children and also to do household. I work for a few different families, from Chinese to Indian, Dutch, and British. My last ex-employer was Olivia and Cyril. They are from France. And this is where my life began to change. And in 2011, I was going through a very difficult time. When I went back home, I faced a lot of struggle. Even though I support my family, uh, my siblings to get the education. I went back home to get married, but it didn't happen. So I came back, I was really going through a very big struggle, and my Madam Olivia approached me and said, Nilu, you could go to school again. And I was really shocked, because at this time, I was 14 years left behind. When I was in the orphanage, I asked, they say no, but here my madam say you can go. And I, I said, really, madam? And then she said, yes, you can. And then I said, yes, I would love to go to school again. And then I enrolled myself to a school called IDA. It's a micro-business school where they educate and empower women, especially migrant women, to start a business in back their home. And I studied there for two years. I learned how to, st uh, how to start a micro business from bookkeeping to marketing. And in 2011, 12, I graduated from this school. With the, with the support, after the graduation, with the support of a lot of friends who believed in me, who thought that I would be a very inspiration, they supported me to enroll myself to a, a leadership program. In this leadership program, I was really confronted with my self-limiting belief. That sounds like this. I'm a useless person. I'm just a maid. I, was, I have poor education. This limit, self-limiting belief was no longer serving me to grow. So, in this process, through the pro coaching and mentoring that provided in the process, I came to see many possibilities. In this way of seeing the new world, I design my own world. I start, I, I start taking risk. I step into a something that a very uncomfortable zone to start my own business. And I started a business called Liluti. I, cho uh, I choose to forgive all the unfairness that happened to me in the past. And I, ex I start accepting myself. I, I, have, I came to realize that education and empowerment are very critical, critical to a brighter future for women. One of the great lessons that I learned 
during my life, I mean, during my all the program and through my life, is the be do have model. To have the result that I want to have in my life, we have to take an effective action, which is do, but but what is extraordinary and extraordinary um, result is to challenge myself with this question who am i willing to be so i declare it i am the free woman this is okay this is sorry did i miss that Okay, this I need to go through again. <laughs> so this is my business, Neluti. Uh, we we are selling in Singapore locally, and uh, this is uh, we have customers from Hong Kong and France and Singapore. And this is my family. Oh, did I miss one slide? It's not in this one. Okay. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, one slide is missing, but it's okay. Um, so that I declare it, I am the free woman. With this compelling conversation, I took risk to start my own business. And this is me as a speak, first time I speaking in INSEAD Micro Business School, my first speech. Today, I have my online tea business called Nilu Tea. And we are selling uh, online worldwide. Uh, we, are, we have launched this tea business to Singapore market and we are selling here locally. And we have customers from Hong Kong, US and France and Singapore. This is my family. Uh, now they have grown up. They are very big and my eldest brother is married with children and my sister is married but third brother we are still uh, looking after him. Not only this I started and I supported my family, I also started my own foundation which I told you about Emerging Hope Lanka. What we aim to do from Emerging Hope Lanka we talk about transition, we talk about uh, positive impact uh, for the society. So what I aim to do from Imaging Hope Lanka is to educate and empower women in Sri Lanka in rural areas. In Sri Lanka, women's life is not as uh, European women or some of the Asia, Asian countries. It's after the marriage, they, they give up everything, they don't go to work, they become a housewife and doing the household and mostly their time is spent in the kitchen. So what, I, what we aim in Emerging Hope Lanka is to create a business, home-based business to do from home so that will generate some income for the family and for the children to continue their school. So as you're seeing the picture, it's one, one of the uh, mother I mean, the marriage. She's a very young girl. Is Lakmali in the left? Um, she, when I met her, she was working in a garment factory, and uh, she earned very little money. But then, going through the Emerging Hope Lanka program and uh, mentoring through our program, she started her own sewing shop uh, in her house, and she's today she has one employee. She has three machines, she is a subcontractor to a, a garment factory. And here is uh, uh, Priyadarshani, who is selling king coconut, if you have visited Sri Lanka. It's one of the famous things, or everywhere you could see. She is selling king coconut, and we are uh, supporting her as well. This is Chamari, a single mom who have started a spice business. She have one blind boy. 
and we are supporting her to great gain income for to support her family as well and the uh, left uh, right side you see the small mini mart that is started in a house she's doing through the living room so this okay um sorry so this is what we are doing through the emerging hope and nilu tea will provide a bit all the nilu tea what we are selling all over the uh, income we give 10 percent of profit to emerging hope lanka to run the program and do everything uh, for the women i just i just want to share with you uh, just very recent visit that we did to a tea plantation a very remote area uh, we were distributing some books to all the children in that about 170 children in this area uh, we i went to see how their daily life i spent three days with them and this is the road that we went through it is very different difficult journey i was really scared and frightened because we went through a mountain um, 400 me meters about sea level and this is i walk through the i walk with the children to the school they walk a 1 kilometer 107 1700 steps down to go to school every day school day seven uh, five days a week they come down and they go up i went down because i want to experience it and you see them their shoes is broken but they were very happy to walk with me when they saw me they had like a light on their face i was so happy to walk with them too and i they don't have a library at Niluti, we hope to build a library in end of this year. This is what I promised to them. Because the school, primary school is one kilometer away from the secondary school. So the secondary school has a library, but they can't go to secondary school to get the library books. They have to walk one kilometer up and down. So I said I will build a library for them. So this is we walking to school with the children and that's the book distribution for the children that we supported all the children we did two groups so what we could learn here we i'm sure you all have a lot of possibilities and opportunities to share what you have and to do something for the world we this week is a special week as i said early is for you all it's a, it is called it imagination week and we call, we speak about transition what kind of impact do you want to create to the people that you are uh, going to work with what kind of business you want to start so that it it will impact the world the people we live around Lastly, I want to share with you, we have, I have started my journey. I have started my, I, I know what I want to do and where I want to go and who I want to meet and what I want to create. This is the 50 mothers that I'm working with and they are they are under two years uh, contract with me that we are working i mean they all have different type of business they are they have uh, spice packing uh, pig farming chicken farming flower growing and small mini mart different businesses so they they are all individually engaging with me 
I am visiting their businesses and seeing how they are progress for two years while I doing my business and also my work. I have started my journey here. I'm, I'm here in front of you today and looking at our future. Always thinking, how do I create a sustainable impact through my business? My intention is to create a long-lasting impact that the world has that will last long. Today we, we have a lot of issues around the world. Health, mental health issues, economic and also political issues, and also environmental issues, if you see what is happening around today. And how to create a sustainable impact in this uncertain uh, uncertain future. This is something that I always think in myself. I would like to leave you with a question. What kind of world are you creating individually and collectively? What impact do you want to bring today's world that will be the catalyst for a positive transition over the next 30 years and beyond? Thank you. Uh, we have a few students, they prepared some questions, so if you want to join us on stage to, uh, to share uh, your question and to have an interactive session, so please um, join us to four students, yes, we have four students, I guess. Do you need this? So, good morning. Good morning. Well, thank you for your presentation. It was really great to hear from you and to learn from your life path. So, yeah. work? Yeah. so you talk about two uh, transitions. Mm -hmm. One more cultural when you move from Sri Lanka to Singapore. Mm -hmm. And one more social when you move from May to entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, my question is, uh, when you go through those two forms of transitions, what were the main strengths that were necessary for you? You talk about food. Yeah. Uh, my main strength is my, my faith, that I believed in myself. I am a Christian. I believe in God. And uh, my faith is always very, it was always strong in, uh, in myself. And uh, uh, it was it was very strong. When I, I, there, it was not an easy journey. I always I faced a lot of uh, struggle, ups and down. I some some moment I was in a place where I thought I would give up, uh, end my life. There were there were many moments that I faced this there was a certain situation that this was the end. Then, but that faith really stood up in me and then it drew me and I believed. Actually, after the, the leadership program that I attend, it really made me a very strong person. There was the biggest changing uh, point that happened in me 2014 after I going through it's called Asia Work. Uh, there was a coach asked me, uh, why are you waiting and for what? And when is going to happen? I mean, I, I was in that program, he, he, he was in, I was standing up and asked, uh, what do you want? And then I said, I want to build a house. And when are you going to build a house? I said, I don't know. 
because I need money. Then he said, okay, how much you need? Those questions I did not ask to myself until at that moment. This is where I decided I will not wait until I have enough, but I will move on and I will start something. Along the way, I will build everything. And then I have started and I have come this far. I can say I'm very proud where I am because from rags to where I am today, I'm very happy what I'm doing with all my people. Yes. Thank you for uh, the inspiring story that you described us. Uh, you described us all your life, like from uh, the beginning with most difficulties. I would like to ask you which one for you was the toughest one of uh, your difficulties in your life? What did you learn? from it and how can you suggest us to approach difficulties in uh, the next year of uh, our life? Thank you. Good question. One of the most difficult moment was when I lost my mom. Because I knew I have to stop going to school. I love going to school. I love my school. I never come home with any homework because I finish in the school. It was the most difficult time that I knew I have to give up the school. I have to become a mom to my sibling. I know my father is not an easy person. He always fight at home. Even though my mom is not there, I know he's going to hit me or do what he's usually doing every day after he gets drunk. So it was not an easy thing for me to take the mommy's role at home. That, that, three, that two years was a difficult time for me, but I did because I always look at my siblings and I knew I need to do something for them. So there was the motivation behind that always kept me going because I always had something. And coming here in Singapore also because of I have to support their education because there was no one to support. So I was like the mummy to them. So that was the biggest motivation for me. I'm sure you all have something that you want to do for, your, for yourself or your family, or that's something that ringing in you. So it, find what is really your personal calling. What is the purpose, what you want to do, that it will drive you what, where you want to be. to a person who was insecure, to a person with strength. Uh, do you have a story or anecdotes about a moment where you realized you weren't a useless person anymore, but you had strength to achieve your dreams and your goals? Yes. Yes, I, I do, actually. It, it was, that's why I said, I, I was thinking I'm useless. I am poor, I am less educated, I don't have any ability, even though I went through IDA, I started a business, but it still there was something in me was not allowing me to move on. So after going through that uh, leadership program and coaching program, really, it's really transformed my life, if I say. The, the question that we ask to ourselves, who am I willing to be? and what do I want, and where I want to go. So those questions really make me to think again and again. Why do I think myself that I am a poor, educated person? Why do I say to myself that I am a maid? Because those are like the self-limiting belief, that wall I have built around me to cover myself. It's my comfort zone, if I say. That's the place where I would love to in, stay in and I say, okay, I'm not stepping out because I believe that this is what I am and who I am. But if I can think beyond that and if I'm willing to fail and fail again and fail better, I, I think you would achieve something. If you don't try, you won't know what 
you're going to achieve. So that's something that I learned through my journey. I, if I don't go, I don't know what's happening there. If I don't try, I don't know what I'm going to achieve, whether I fail, fail or, or succeed. So I always try. It's, even I fail, I'm willing to accept. I know what I have made a mistake, then it's okay. I move to the left, I start again. I will never give up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Neil. Thank you very much for the Thank you. So we prepared another station. Yes. 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 Um, so I brought some tea for all of you. You could taste it. This is my tea that I'm selling all over the world. We, we just even though started. Remember when you drink it, the people who work in the plantation. Because I know who they are and I know where they work and I know each one of them, how they work from the beginning to the cup that you're going to receive in your hand today. So I would like you to think of them and appreciate them when you drink that. And remember and share with your friends uh, about the Nilu tea because my business is a, uh, uh, what is it called? Social enterprise. Yeah. So we have some tea outside. We have chamomile, Earl Grey, mint tea, and cinnamon, and uh, ginger lemon, and the green tea. So you could choose something that you would love to drink. Anybody, are you all drinking tea? Yes, you do? Okay, great then. Because I know young people doesn't drink a lot <laughs> tea, but yeah. Okay. So everything is outside. Uh, hot water is ready, cup and tea. Thank you very much to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.